identify. What's not represented there is the components within a web application that WAFs and IDSs can't defend against. And these are kind of what we see as interesting issues. And what we're going to talk about today is going to be a light-hearted look at business logic flaws, where a lot of the, the money is actually being made on the internet this way. And we're going to be talking a little bit about it from a black hat point of view that might give you some interesting ideas, but be aware they are dangerous. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, everybody, for coming. This should be a really fun talk. So those, uh, those terms, you're, not going to, you're, you're going to hear a lot about the terms, uh, cross-site scripting, SQL injection, CSRF, and things like that. You're not going to hear about those from us. We're already getting balls thrown at us. Oh, I'm sorry. So we're going to talk about uh, business logic flaws, the real world stuff, how do you make a lot of money, and we're going to give some you know, all real world examples. Should be a really fun talk. So the attacks that you all can do, your mothers can do, our parents can do, and uh, what else, how should I describe it? Well, let's just get to it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, online ballot stuffing. So we're going to start from very little dollar figures, and we're going to get up to seven-figure ranges on very simple attacks that anybody can do online. So the first one will be that we'll talk about is uh, ballot stuffing. Now, everybody's seen online polls you know, for elections, for what your favorite sci-fi or movie is, or you know, pick of the week or whatever. So the one, and online polls are all over the place. There's no niche too small, industry too narrow. But the one we're going to talk about today is the one that was uh, really derived from the, uh, the Westminster Dog Show. So a Austin dog was one of the winners of the, uh, the Westminster Dog Show. So the Austin newspaper said, okay, great, we're going to create this Web 2.0 application and create our own categories for it and find the best dogs in Austin, right? Uh, everything from chihuahuas and everything else. So thousands and thousands of people submitted their dogs. And you can go onto the site and you can press yes if you like the dog and no if you didn't. There was no money involved in this, so just it kind of goes to the motivation. It was pure bragging rights. You get your pic dog's picture in the paper and you get to brag to all your friends. Now, the thing to understand about this particular contest is that winning was about percentages. Positive votes over negative votes. Not just, not just you know, who got the most positive votes. So... <laughs> What we're going to look at here is there's in this particular contest, there was three ways to cheat. One is you can put your dog in and you can ballot stuff, you know, for lack of a better word, put overwhelmingly positive votes, just click, you know, put, click putting yes on your dog. You can put a whole bunch of negative votes against your top competitors and stuff it that way. And there's a number, uh, third way is uh, at the very end of the contest, if you knew the, where the, when the contest was going to end, you could put in your dog at the last minute, put one positive vote, contest will close, and you'd win because you had the best uh, overall percentage. So those are the three ways to cheat. So uh, Robert Hansen, who is uh, with us here today, he's from Austin. Uh, and uh, so Robert, Robert's uh, girlfriend's co-worker solicits her local web hacker for help, and it's because she really wants her dog, Tiny, to win this Austin Chihuahua contest. So Arsenic consents, and he goes in like a super hacker, and he fires up Burp Proxy, and uh, says, okay, how much is, how many votes is it going to take to get Tiny to win? So he wrote, writes a quick number rotator, moves the dog into, moves Tiny into first with 2,000 votes, and figures his work is done. So what happens at the end of the, just before the end of the contest, another dog owner, uh, or another dog perhaps we should say, Choo Choo, uh, puts a bunch of uh, negative votes towards, towards Tiny, and uh, causes the percentage to go down by, uh, and lose the contest, right? So 450 negative votes, even though Tiny had way more positive votes. Again, it's all about percentages, so, so Tiny lost. And uh, so that's Tiny, and that's our snake trying to figure out what the heck happened. He just got, uh, got out-attacked on an online Chihuahua poll in Austin. <laughs> so wait, 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 go back one. Go back one. So... The, the, while there's no money involved, you've got to think about, you know, web security has really become uh, mainstream. I mean, two, three years ago, we could have got away with this and, you know, we could have won online. We did win online polls all day, all day long. But you've got to imagine, like, you know, you cannot take this stuff for granted as a bad guy anymore. There's somebody out there that has the same skill set as you that's willing to take the time to win an online Chihuahua contest in Austin. <laughs> 
So we, we, we're here, you know, as, you know, the work by, you know, Tom, but the industry is finally here. There's, you know, what is it, 800 people here or something like that. So WebAtSec is here. The bad guys have figured it out or the ones, at least the ones that want to give online polls anyway. <laughs> so. so you guys are all familiar with CAPTCHAs, right? This is basically the automated process of telling humans and computers apart. The idea is to stop automated actions from being scripted. We, we want to stop certain processes. Go ahead and give me a slide. Can you guys hear me in the back okay? Do I have to chew on the microphone? All right, so the background for CAPTCHAs. This was originally started to prevent spammers from signing up new mail accounts for spam. This was just a simple stopgap measure. Now, there's three ways to defeat CAPTCHAs. Very, very simple. The first one's flawed implementations. There's a lot of documented cases. Some of them use the same answers. You simply submit a valid answer for any of the questions, maybe very simple math or replay. The second option is a little bit more complicated, but still is a very cheap solution. Optical character recognition. The idea is to simply read and represent. Right now, that's the biggest problem is the, uh, they're getting very, very illegible. So they're looking for other more challenging ways to do this. So as attackers, the cost of work has gone up. The final is the mechanical or the Turk. What's happening here is we're literally going scale of economy. We're outsourcing to solve CAPTCHAs. So the question is, you get an impossible programmatic solve for a CAPTCHA, you're going to take that CAPTCHA during the process, feed it to somebody somewhere else, and hopefully at a low cost, get answers and be able to continue in a programmatic manner. So you need high volume, low costs, but does it really happen? Robert got contacted, and uh, this is the first entry which was posted at hackers.org. For three to 500 CAPTCHAs, nine to $15 a day. So about $50 a day, you can continue doing this. The cost has been controlled. Can it get cheaper? Absolutely. Contact from Vietnam. Hi, I'm from Vietnam. We have a group with 20 person. We work some site. Our rate, $4 per 100 CAPTCHA. Hope we work you. Cheaper still. $2 per 1,000. Scale of economy, guys. We just want to make the relationship. <laughs> Do any of you guys read resumes or have to interview people? <laughs> Cover letter. Babu says, dear sir, I'm interested to work for data empty. Please call me. Very, very simple. So the question is, is this really happening? It actually got published on ZDNet. No CAPTCHA can survive the human process if it's being financed. The strength of nearshore and offshore outsourcing just came to the criminal world, guys. Scale of economy. All right, move, moving along here, where you know with captures we're moving into just a, a few dollars per hour per you know interesting technically, but it's not going to make us a whole lot of money. So we're going to move on to the next level here, uh, recovering someone else's password. If you think of it like a feature, it gets a whole lot easier. And users, you know, we forget our passwords from time to time. So